When the old blood was found, it must have been thought a miracle. They called it the blood of the gods, and rightly so, for if you injected it into your veins, you would no longer be afflicted by the weaknesses of the flesh. It follows that a city built upon this blood would become mighty indeed, and so it was with Yanam. The supply of the blood was controlled by the healing church, and the church became the most powerful of all. But the blood was foul, infected. Those who had taken the old blood began transforming into hideous beasts, and eventually the church could keep the scourge a secret no longer. Fearing the populace itself, they retreated into Cathedral Ward and devised a plan to fight back. The church hunters were that plan. The hunters in white specialized in experimental blood ministration, for the church continued to use the old blood, albeit now with fear in their hearts. And the hunters in black were a little different. Their role was to violently purge this town of the beastly scourge. Beasthood was a cancer, and with their surgical white gloves, the black church hunters would rip the beasthood from the hearts of the Arnhemites. They were known to dispose of victims, even potential victims, before signs of sickness had even manifested themselves. Their black attire inspired fear in the hearts of the Yanamites, for if they decided that you had the beast within you, then it was so. But the beast lies dormant within us all, and ironically, the clerics transformed into the most terrifying beasts. Father is a title used for clerics in a foreign land, and the healing church knew no such rank, an outsider, Father Gascoigne, joined the ranks of the Black Church Hunters. Perhaps he, like many others, was sick and needed treatment. Perhaps he saw the miracles that the Church was performing, actual miracles that could have inspired a new faith in the man. Or perhaps it was the thirst for blood that drew him here, for Gascoigne turned out to be a truly capable hunter, a fine addition to the ranks of the Church. Gascoigne was partnered with another, an older hunter by the name of Henrique. Capable beyond his years, this old man was easily recognizable in his unique yellow garb. Its description tells us that they were a fierce and gallant duo, but also that their partnership led to Henrique's tragically long life. He must have been very old indeed to be tragically so. Perhaps Gascoigne's access to the church granted Henrique access to the old blood, and it's possible that the miraculous blood granted him life beyond his years. Who knows what that can do to a man? Together, Henrique and Gascoigne were a part of the effort to purge Yarnum of the Scourge, just two more hunters doing what hunters must, for the good of the city, of course. Gascoigne even found love outside the church's walls within central Yarnum. A woman named Viola, blonde and favoring a bright red brooch. Perhaps the jewel was a gift from a hunter. Imagine being a man of Yarnum during this time. Put yourself in this city. As a good Yarnumite would, you join the nightly hunt with your brothers, fighting against the scourge. You lock your women and children safely at home, with incense at their doors to ward away the beasts. You fight alongside the black church hunters, Though, these men of the church are watching you at all times for any signs of the plague. You fight alongside those who would kill you if they had to. In time, Viola fell pregnant. Soon after, Gascoigne left the healing church. Perhaps he had something more important to him now. Who are you? I don't know your voice, but I know that smell. Are you a hunter? Family must have pulled him away from the church, and on the night of our unending hunt, we find this young girl alone in her family's home. And I just want to look for my mum. Daddy never came back from the hunt, and she went to find him. But now she's gone too. I'm all alone and scared. We're looking for a woman with a red brooch and a man garbed in black. Imagine being Gascoigne at this point in the story, an ex-hunter of the Healing Church, he still wears the tattered black garb that shows how faithfully he served the church in their hunt. And tonight, the hunt is worse than any night before it. Tonight, the line between man and beast is blurred. The Beastmen of Yarnum 
cry for death to their ministers if they see you wearing the minister's garb. This is the exact same thing Gascoigne was wearing. It's unclear exactly what happened in the tomb of Odin, but here we find Father Gascoigne, surrounded by the corpses of fellow Yarnamites, hacking them to pieces, completely lost to his thirst for blood. On a rooftop nearby, we find his wife, dead. My mum wears a red jeweled brooch. It's so big and, and beautiful, you won't miss it. Oh, I mustn't forget, if you find my mum, give her this music box. It plays one of Daddy's favourite songs. And when Daddy forgets us, we play it for him so he remembers. Mum's so silly when I'm off without it. A small music box received from a young Yarnum girl plays a song shared by her mother and father. Inside the lid is a small scrap of paper, perhaps an old message. Two names can be made out, however faintly. Viola and Gascoigne. When we play their song, the husband recoils in agony. Gascoigne is losing himself to the beastly scourge. He wants to forget, but the music reminds him of his wife, his children, his city, his humanity, his dead wife, his broken city, his despair. His wife is likely dead at his hand, for she didn't have their music box to remind him of who he was, as she had done many times before. Gascoigne is beyond saving, and you end his suffering. It almost sounds as if his last words are, forgive me. We don't have the heart to give a child her dead mother's brooch. Instead, we send her to Erden Chapel. She can't stay in this house alone, for neither her mother nor her father is coming back for her. Better to send her to a safe place. Hello, Miss Hunter. Still can't find my mum. Oh, okay. I can wait. But isn't there something I can do? Maybe mum and dad are stuck out there waiting for me to come and find them. What do you think, Miss Hunter? We sent her to Erden Chapel. Yes, okay. Don't you, Miss Hunter? I love you almost as much as mum and dad. And granddad. She never appears there. Trace the path she would have taken. Imagine this little girl creeping through a sewer filled with crawling corpses and carrion crows to run past it all and come so close to the chapel only to spy this thing at the end of the tunnel. It eats the little girl, and after your revenge, you find the bloodied white ribbon upon its remains. Ah, uh, you haven't by any chance seen my little sister, have you? Someone did come back for the little girl. Turns out, Gascoigne had two daughters, and you just sent one to her death. I told her to look after the house. But she's run off somewhere. She's still quite small. And wears a big white ribbon. Have you seen her out there anywhere? Oh. How did this happen? Why would she ever go outside? <laughs> At least. I'll have something to remember her by. The truly sad thing is. A friend of the family was waiting at Erden tomb around this time. The one the littlest daughter calls Grandad. He could have met the youngest daughter there, had the pig not consumed her in the tunnel. Instead, Henrique goes mad here in this place. Perhaps he discovered that someone killed his friend, or perhaps, since the littlest daughter calls him Grandad, he discovered the corpse of his daughter, Viola. Perfect timing. I must warn you not to go near the tomb below Erden Chapel in the Cathedral Ward. Henrik, an old hunter, has gone mad. And he's my mark. When we arrive, we're already too late. As with Gascoigne, loss pushes Henrik over the edge. We've seen that hunters turn into terrible beasts, so the hunter must become the hunted. That 
That wasn't necessary of you, but you have my thanks. We made it with our lives. You're not bad at all. You must have killed Gascoigne as well, then. He was falling apart, I'm sure it had to be done. But try to keep your hands clean. A hunter should hunt beasts. Leave the hunting of hunters to me. <laughs> Gascoigne killed his wife. We killed Gascoigne. Henrique tried to kill us, so Eileen killed Henrique. The last surviving daughter throws herself off a ledge upon receiving her sister's bloodied ribbon, and the bloodline of Gascoigne ends here. However, somewhere, in another hunt perhaps, you never spoke to the littlest daughter. She never went looking for her parents, she never travelled down this tunnel. She stayed home until her sister returned, and they huddled together until morning came. I won't be afraid. I know. I do. The morning always comes. <laughs>